so today we're going to talk about the, the sinuses on horses. So we've got a lot of sinus compartments, um, and they're closely intertwined with some of the, the cheek teeth. And so when we get an infection of the upper molars, and sometimes the last premolar, that can actually, there's just a very thin layer of bone about the thickness of a fingernail that separates the tooth roots from the sinus compartment. And so sometimes if we have dental disease, that can actually break into the sinus and cause a sinus infection. So let's come up here at these skulls and I'm gonna show a couple things. So let's look at this one here. Sorry, it's not the prettiest cut out, but this is actually a tooth root right here where I've got the syringe. So this is a tooth root. And then these are also tooth roots. And we can see how this compartment um, is very asso closely associated with that in that the bone that separates it is very thin. So if we have a, an abscessed root right here, right here, it can break into the sinus and then the pus will eventually come out the nostril. Okay, so we're gonna show you guys today a way to flush the sinuses. So the horse we've got is one that had an extraction about 10 days ago and it had a sinus infection and there's still a little bit of residue there so we're going to try and help uh, flush out some of that that pus and do it in a minimally invasive way. Uh, the way we're going to show it's very easy, very simple to do uh, and you can't really tell that it's been done uh, the day after because we're just going in through using some needles. So let's go ahead and talk about anatomy for a second. So we can see we've got some discharge here on this horse. So it's got a unilateral nasal discharge uh, that we know is from a tooth. The alveolar socket is he healing very well, but we still have a little sinusitis. So what we're gonna do is we're actually prepping um, right up here, up um, by the medial canthus. And then we're prepping down just above the rostral aspect of the facial crest where we're gonna go into the caudal maxillary sinus, or the, I'm sorry, the rostral maxillary sinus. So here we're gonna go into the conchofrontal sinus, which is gonna go into the caudal maxillary sinus. That'll dra drain out through the middle nasal meatus out the nostril. And then we're gonna go right in here below this blood vessel and drain and lavage the rostral maxillary sinus. We've got everything uh, clipped and then we did an aseptic prep. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of lidocaine. We're going to go um, about not quite halfway between the medial canthus over to midline. Uh, and we're going to go right here, put a little bit of lidocaine. And then we're going to come down. So we're going to find this is a rostral aspect of the facial crest. And on a young horse, you have to be really careful doing this because the whole sinus compartment is filled with teeth. So on a horse that's under four years old, this takes quite a bit of expertise. On a horse that's older, that's in its teens, and especially one that's missing the number nine tooth, you have a wide margin of safety in there. But you do have to be careful that the infraorbital canal runs from basically the medial canthus of the eye to the naso incisive notch right here. So this line right here um, is where you can expect to find the infraorbital canal, so you don't want to go into that area. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the rostral aspect of the facial crest. I'm going to go about an inch uh, or an inch and a quarter up from there, dorsal, and then I'm going to come back just a couple centimeters with my block, and we're going to numb this area right here. All right. I use a 14 gauge needle, and that's what I'm actually going to use even to make my incision. So I'm going to make the incision right here. You can use a scalpel blade too, but 14 gauge needle works well. Okay, so there's our incision. And now I'm going to take the needle and put it right in here. And I'm going to start tapping. There we go. So now we're inside the sinus. What happens is my needle now has filled with a little piece of bone. So I'm actually gonna take this needle out and you wanna note the angle that your needle is at because the hardest part of this job is putting your new needle 
in the exact same angle and same place as the old one because you have to find that little hole. Okay, so here I'm pulling this out. You can see the air bubbles from the breathing and now I'm putting in the other needle in. Okay, and now we know that needle's open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my saline bag right here. We can open that up. And we're going to lower her head down because we want that to flush out the nostrils. So we'll show you guys here. In a second, you'll see the fluid running out her nostril. There it comes, okay? And here you can see the fluid pulling into my hand a little bit. Okay, and that's all there is to it for, so remember that goes into the conchofrontal sinus, which will lavage the caudal maxillary sinus as well, but that does not lavage the rostral maxillary sinus or the ventral conchal sinus. We'll show you guys how to do that in just a second. All right, so now we've done, you can run as many bags as you want through there. Here you can see some foam. That's a little bit of the, you can see how much pressure she had in there. When there's inflammation, the, sometimes the nasal maxillary, nasal maxillary aperture can be a little bit constricted. And so she's got, she's got a little bit of pressure there. We were able to get a really good flush and uh, we got a lot of pus out. So you can do as many bags as you need to. It's kind of uncommon that you'll have it back pressuring like this, but it can happen if it happens. Don't worry about it. That's okay. It's still draining out through the nostril, so that's fine. Now what we're going to do is we take, um, you can use different types of uh, lactating cow antibiotic ointments. You can see this stuff here is, is pretty thick and it has a nipple. Um, so that's an antibiotic gel, and I'm actually going to inject that directly through that 14-gauge needle. And I'm going to put that right into the sinuses, and uh, I'm actually going to put two in this case. We're basically going to fill that sinus with local antibiotic. Okay, and then when that's done, you can just take that needle out. And if you want to put a staple or something, you can, but you honestly don't need to. That heals very fast. I just leave them open in case I need to do another one. Um, and that'll just bleed a little bit and seal over uh, because it's just a tiny little incision. So now we're going to do the rostral maxillary sinus. So we can see we've got a blood vessel right here. So I'm going to go just below that. Okay, so I'm going to hold that skin. And again, I'm going to use my needle to actually make the incision. There we go. Now we're in. Okay, so I'm going to swap out my needle again, just like we did on the other one, because it's going to be plugged. You can see we there is blood, and then there's a little bit of pus in here. I don't know if you can appreciate that on the camera or not but there's a little bit of white, uh, and so that's, that's pus. Let me hold there for just a second. I'm going to actually use a syringe here. Maybe we'll aspirate a little bit, and we'll see how much pus we have. Can't see much, so that's okay. So now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to try and match my angle. Like I said, this is the hardest part right here. And occasionally your needle tip will bend like that and you have to do it several times. Don't worry, that's not a problem. Okay, now I'm gonna aspirate. You can see that pus coming out, look at that. Okay, so this is a great example demonstrating why it's so important to flush the different compartments because we just got done flushing the caudal maxillary sinus and we got a lot of pus out, but we also have pus in the rostral maxillary sinus. Sometimes you can see that radiographically, sometimes you can't. So it really comes down to, again, um, in the words of Dr. Kalchek, applied anatomy, understanding what's going on, which sinus compartments communicate with which. So here I'm gonna aspirate and look at that. So this is pus 
in the rostral maxillary sinus. All right, so we're going to hook that one up just like we did the other one. And then we're going to lower, lower the head so he doesn't aspirate. It may take a second for fluid to come out. We can hear the pressure in here. You can see a little discomfort there probably from pressure. You want to make sure they're well sedated so that their head is low in there. Now we can see we're getting some discharge. So again, I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, it's a little bit hard maybe to appreciate it. Yeah, there we can see it. Okay, so now we're going to flush that really well. And then we're also going to put antibiotic and ointment into the rostral maxillary sinus compartment. That's basically um, how to flush the different compartments. It's really important to do those. Uh, if you think that you have disease in the rostral maxillary sinus, keep in mind on young horses, what happens is you can see just on this horse here, how small the rostral maxillary sinus is compared to the caudal because it's completely filled with tooth roots. Now, as these teeth erupt, that compartment is gonna become bigger and bigger because there's gonna be less tooth root inside of it. And so on young horses, you have to be really careful doing that because you could come in and you could hit one of those tooth roots. So um, I, again, I don't advise doing this on the rostral maxillary horse, on a horse that's under five, unless you have a lot of experience, uh, but certainly on older horses, just don't go too deep. Once you're through the bone, just stop. And then the caudal maxillary sinus, you're very safe. And keep in mind, you have the infloorbital um, canal that runs, you know, basically along this line right here inside the sinuses. So uh, it's a very easy procedure. This, you can do this in the field. It's minimally invasive. The horse can go back to riding the next day. And uh, if you enjoy these kind of videos, these clinical tips, Go ahead and follow us, share us, subscribe it. It, it helps uh, get the word out, and we're trying to put out practical information that people can use in the field. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.